the 186th year of the seminary and the 184th year of the college, let the commencement ceremonies begin. Psalms 118 and 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Psalms 118 and 24 says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your many blessings. And we rejoice in the culmination of year's work. Years filled with tears and triumphs, losses and laughter, friendships and growth. We thank you for the gift of family, friends, and teachers who have supported these world changers through their journey here at Erskine College. Father, we pray that you would bless these graduates and everyone connected. Fill them with the Spirit of the Lord. Lord, our prayer today is that we may know the presence of the Holy Spirit and that it will be here with us today. Not just today, but for the rest of our lives, may we be open to your leading, sensitive to your speaking, and alert to your calling. Father, we invite the same power that was at work when Jesus was raised from the grave to be present with us here now. Lord, we declare that you are welcome amongst us in this place. In your precious son name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand, remain standing, and join the Corlears in the singing of our national anthem. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and you may be seated. Well, good morning, and welcome to the 2023 commencement ceremonies of Erskine College and Theological Seminary. On behalf of Erskine's faculty, staff, administration and board of trustees it is my privilege to welcome the families the friends the guests and of course the graduates on this special occasion and today we gather to glorify god acknowledge the lordship of jesus christ over all of our endeavors and celebrate the erskine college and theological seminary graduating class of 2023 Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mike Whitehurst, is with us today on the dais this morning. Chairman Whitehurst, thank you for your leadership and for being an essential part of the commencement exercises. And I would like Mr. Whitehurst and other board members and their spouses who are in attendance to please stand so we can acknowledge your important work in the life of the college and seminary.
wish to give a warm welcome to our commencement speaker, the Honorable Henry Dragon McMaster, Governor of the State of South Carolina. I would like to thank our special guests today and ask that they stand and be recognized. Mrs. Peggy McMaster, the First Lady of South Carolina. Philip Cook, the Alumni Association President of Erskine College. Special recognition to those who are celebrating their 50th anniversary reunion, the class of 1973. And if I could have all the faculty and any of the administration who are in attendance of Erskine College and Theological Seminary to please stand and be recognized. Turning to you, graduates of the class of 2023, I want to thank your parents and the family members, the brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and the friends who have come to celebrate this special day for you. May God's richest blessings be theirs and yours today and the years ahead. Thank you for coming. Today we are honored to have as our commencement speaker, Governor Henry McMaster, the 117th governor of the state of South Carolina. Governor McMaster rose to the governorship on January 24th, 2017, following Governor Nikki Haley's appointment to the United States Ambassador of the United Nations. He was elected to a full term as governor in November of 2018 and a second term in 2022. Born in Columbia, South Carolina, he received a bachelor's in history from the University of South Carolina in 1969. He attended the University of South Carolina School of Law, where he served on the editorial board of the South Carolina Law Review and graduated in 1973. As governor, he has led a strong and vibrant South Carolina economy, announcing more than 79,000 new jobs with over 32 billion in new capital investments in the state. Under his leadership, the state has made transformation changes and investments in the classrooms by expanding full four-year kindergarten, raising K through 12 teacher pay and supporting school choice throughout the state. Governor McMaster and his wife Peggy have two adult children and two grandchildren. Now before he addresses you, it is my pleasure to announce that Erskine College and Theological Seminary is proud to award Governor McMaster an honorary doctorate in public service. Governor McMaster's life has been marked by service to South Carolina and the nation with notable experience as a legislative assistant to a U.S. Senator practicing law before their U.S. District Court, Court of Appeals, Court of Claims, and Supreme Court. He was appointed by President Reagan to serve as a U.S. Attorney, and he has been a member of the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education, South Carolina Ports Authority, served as Lieutenant Governor, and now Governor. His life of service and dedication to the well-being of South Carolina, the nation, and people worldwide is a model to be emulated. Being a man of God, Governor McMaster exemplifies every aspect of Erskine's vision, that of a life of service and leadership, building Christ's church and influencing society for God's glory. And at this time, I would ask Governor McMaster and Chairman Whitehurst to please come forward and stand Chairman Whitehurst, 
on behalf of Erskine's Board of Trustees, would you please do the honor of placing the doctoral hood on Governor McMaster and presenting him with his diploma. Saudi Arabia unless you fly there. It's all for tourism. But then I look at this place, these beautiful places all over South Carolina. We're easy to get to. And that's why people are coming from all over. You can write this down. There's not a better place in the whole world to live, work, and raise a family than this place where you are today. So those of you who are here, you may go off for a little while, come back. Those of you from not here, you're always welcome come back and to stay. The First Lady and I are happy to be here with you today. I want to stop. Thank Dr. Adamson, President and Chairman Michael Whitehurst for the, and all of you for the invitation. It is really an honor to be here on this beautiful campus in this meaningful place. I do have some things I, I want to tell you, and that is that this is a beautiful day. South, Car South Carolina Day, different from other days in other places. May 6th, a Saturday. On another Saturday, two weeks ago, April the 22nd, I ordered the flags on the State House, lowered to half staff from sunrise to sunset. That's an honor given by our state only to those who have greatly distinguished themselves and our state by their service, valor, and achievement, that is those who have answered when duty called. The 13 men being recognized that day had fallen in the early morning light in a battle, a fierce battle which took place on a Wednesday, August 16, 1780, in the pine forests of Camden in the Revolutionary War. In this battle of Britain's southern campaign, 3,700 patriots faced 2,220 British soldiers, and total victory was claimed by the well-armed and disciplined British as 1,000 untrained, starving, inexperienced patriots fell, some as young as 15 years. As the patriots fled the field, the British attempted to bury their own dead with some semblance of discipline and honor. The Americans, however, were left in shallow, haphazard trenches beneath only inches of soil. 242 years later, metal buttons and musket balls detected under the surface led archaeologists to the graves of 14 men and boys. One carefully placed British soldier, one Native American, one loyalist, and 11 patriots. All had given their lives in battle for their countrymen, and all were deserving of honorable interment. The Catawba Nation would commemorate their fallen warrior. America and Great Britain would do the same. Thus, as the caissons rolled and the wooden caskets were carefully carried to rest, martial cords drifted upwards, drums snared and beat a slow muffled march, the silence of 2,000 respectful souls, young and old, from near and far, was broken only by the mournful strain of bagpipes and the sad farewell of the bugler's taps, and finally by the ricocheting echoes of the American 21-gun salute. A thousand tall pines stood silent witness to it all perhaps in place of the others fallen in that battle long ago, those who answered when duty called. Perhaps you saw the movie, 
recently Saving Private Ryan. It was based on the true story of Private Fritz Nyland of the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division and the Allied landing at Normandy during World War II, otherwise known as D-Day, June 6, 1944. That was a Tuesday. The film by Steven Spielberg was so realistic that the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs established a national hotline for visitors and veterans to call about emotional distress from the movie. In the movie, Captain John H. Miller, played by Tom Hanks, led a group of Army Rangers to find and retrieve Private James Francis Ryan, who was prayed by Matt Damon. Why? To send him home following the death of his three brothers on D-Day. Despite ferocious encounters with German troops and casualties, they located Private Ryan, but instead of attempting to find their way back to safety behind the lines, duty called, and they joined this small band of desperate paratroopers and made their stand against the oncoming enemy attack in Ramel, which is a fictitious French town. As the seconds in the enemy closed in, and with annihilation certain, Army and air reinforcements arrived just in the nick of time to turn the battle, but not before. Captain Miller was mortally wounded. His last raspy, exhausted words to Private Ryan were, earn this. It's a compelling scene, and though it's fiction, such incidents have taken place thousands of times in warfare and countless other times through sacrifices made by women and men known and unknown to us, celebrated and obscure, including those men who fell at Camden. But over the centuries, they built this country and brought us to where we stand today. It was costly. Someone believed and invested in them just as others have believed and invested in you. That is why the words earned this seem appropriate today at this commencement ceremony. Now, most of you will never likely see battle or even think deeply about it, although it was always be with us. Only the dead have seen the end of war. But you will certainly face other challenges, duties, and obligations which will test you, and you must be prepared to meet them. They may be of spirit, family, or country, but duty is going to call. Many graduates of years ago would happily confess today that the more they experienced, learned, and understood, the more they realized how much there is to know and how little they know of it. They would likely tell you that a successful career, living in peace, requires lifelong and constant learning. Let me, as an attorney, make the case. Exhibit A, about a year ago, there was an article in the papers. Scientists in a place called the South Pacific Gyre, or Gyre, that's a spot in the sea farther from land than any other, so devoid of nutrients and life that it is called, quote, the deadliest spot in the ocean. <coughs> Geomicrobiologists drilling down 20,000 feet below the surface of the ocean found a small population of living microbes, which they estimated had been there for 101 and a half million years. Within just a few days of getting the microbes to the lab, the microbes began to divide. They were living. The microbiologist commented, quote, such longevity is unlikely even mathematically impossible within the constraints of some models. No theoretical biology can explain it, but we found it. Exhibit B, about a year ago, astronomers and scientists discovered a new star. They called it Icarus. How far away was it? Well, light travels 186,000 miles a second. They estimated that the light from this star had traveled at 186,000 miles a second for nine billion years, nine billion years to reach the Earth. They further estimated that this new star was perhaps about one third of the way to what, quote, the edge of the universe. On the other hand, 
Centuries ago, the kings, queens, explorers, and the most learned of their time were confident that the earth was flat with its edge located just over the farthest horizon. We think that's ignorant. We'll compare this. In a study of college graduates just a few years ago, 9.6% named Judge Judy as a member of the United States Supreme Court. <laughs> Similarly, a large percentage of high school graduates thought Andrew Jackson was one of Michael Jackson's brothers. <laughs> Similarly, 22% of Americans could name all five members of the Simpsons, but only one in a thousand could name the five freedoms guaranteed against government intrusion by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. As you, of course, know, those are freedom of religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition for redress of grievances. In 1982, 60% of Americans read a novel. In 2015, only 43%. Too many Americans, for too many Americans, their knowledge of history extends only to the names of their grandparents. It is obvious that we must all continue to learn to prepare because duty is going to call. Question, how long should we continue to learn? Answer, as long as your good health and youthful attitude will let you. Did you know that some creatures don't age at all as we humans think of aging? Their bodies exhibit only negligible senescence or deterioration due to aging, such as we experience with arthritis, loss of muscle tone, hearing, memory, or vision. They have no defined lifespan, but are more likely to succumb to accidents, disease, predation, or starvation. For example, alligators and crocodiles can easily live over 100 years. Bowhead whales and tortoises over 200 years, a jellyfish over 300, and some Greenland sharks over 500. None of us will likely make it that long. So how does one, how do we make the most of it, this education, these gifts, this time we have? The gentle flow of nature will take us only so far. Many great thinkers recommend that we cultivate a strong, even childish curiosity. They say, awaken your sense of wonder, ask questions, especially the stupid ones, read books, laugh, go places, find smart, accomplished people, and watch what they do. Stay healthy. Never be too quick to judge or compare yourself to others because, as written by Mary Ann Evans, better known as George Eliot in 1860, and sung by Elias McDaniel, better known as Bo Diddley in 1962, quote, you can't judge a book by looking at its cover. There are vast amounts of knowledge at our fingertips today. It's not always been that way. When I was in your place, there were four highly accomplished history professors at the University of South Carolina who had supper together every Thursday evening at the elite Epicurean restaurant on Main Street in Columbia. The building's still there across from City Hall, but a more trendy restaurant has taken its place. It was a delight to see them together, sharing insights into inquiries into everything under the sun. I read somewhere that often when one of these scholars would mention a new fact or quote he had discovered in his research, one of the others would quickly lean forward with excitement and say, did you take it down? Did you take it down? For if not, the trail to the treasure would disappear. Not so with us today. <laughs> Through outstanding institutions such as this one, universities, libraries, copious publications, and millions of credible sources and resources, at our fingertips through the internet, it is so easy to gain access to knowledge that most of us do not appreciate the value of it at all. Many of us quickly forget what we've read and some don't read at all. Certainly, we're not taking it down. Fortunately for us, there is music, magnificent music, symphonies, sounds and melodies, lifts and falls, which inspire us, open our hearts and minds, and remind us of our human capacity. I invite you to experience Maurice Ravel's Bolero of 1928, and then their popular songs of recent years, in the lyrics of which you can often find poetry and lessons worth learning. I invite you to examine the works of one such poet, named Robert Allen Zimmerman of Duluth, Minnesota, better known as Bob Dylan, 
a recipient of the Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize for Literature. Although it's almost impossible sometimes to know what Dylan means, I think he's telling us to stay young, to stay youthful, to keep an open, inquisitive mind and positive attitude, to always seek the truth. He approached this with characteristic vagueness in 1964 in his song, My Back Pages, writing, quote, half wrecked prejudice, leap force, rip down all hate, I screamed. Lies that life is black and white I spoke from my skull. I dreamed romantic facts of musketeers foundation to deep somehow. But I was so much older then. I'm younger than that now. He offered this same advice more clearly 10 years later in his song Forever Young, which was recited at length by Chief Justice John Roberts of the US Supreme Court in a commencement address like this one. Quote, may you grow up to be righteous May you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and have the lights surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright and be strong. May you stay forever young. And ladies and gentlemen, where do you find the truth? That's the easiest question of them all. But remember when the winds of opinion and contention swirl and blow, as they do today, the volume of the racket usually bears an inverse relation to the accuracy of the sentiment. As William Shakespeare wrote in his 1599 play, Henry V, quote, the empty vessel makes the greatest sound. And as Albert Einstein later confirmed, quote, the difference between stupidity and genius is that genius has its limits. Back to our patriots, those boys and men for a moment, those who survived the Battle of Camden and others, their stubborn resistance continued, producing overwhelming and demoralizing South Carolina defeats for the British at Kings Mountain on October 7, 1780, and Cowpens on, on January 17, 1781. The tide of the Revolutionary War had turned with 10,000 British troops in forced evacuation from Charleston on 130 British warships on December 14th, 1782, a Saturday. The war was over. The Treaty of Paris was signed on, seven, on September 23rd, 1783, a Wednesday. Duty's call had been answered. So here we are today on another Saturday, a beautiful South Carolina Saturday, May 6th, 2023. You have been given the best that mankind can give. You have been given a magnificent country of liberty and freedom. And now in addition, an excellent education with which you can open every door. So let not the words of John, Grief, John Greenleaf Whittier's 1856 poem, Maud Muller be yours, when he wrote, for all the sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest of these, it might have been. Not you. Rather may you often hear from yourself these words, why? How, please, thank you, I love you, and amen. My young friends, please do not wander and stumble through your years with shallow embraces, but drink deeply and enter the arena of leadership with knowledge and faith. Earn this, and remember, as the preacher said, though the others may not be reading books, they are reading you. Duty will call, answer the call, May God bless you, and God bless America.
It is my privilege today to mention and acknowledge some honors by both faculty and students. The first is the Yance Excellent in Teaching Award. It's presented annually to an outstanding member of the college faculty nominated by students and selected by faculty colleagues. This year's winner is Professor Sandy Robinson. Professor Robinson, come forward, please. I next have the honor of recognizing several students uh, for their achievements. Students, when I call your names, would you please stand at your seats? The first is for the highest GPA. I'd like to recognize the senior from this college class of 2023 who is graduating with the highest grade point average. Please stand, Olivia Eleanor Brown. And now we're going to recognize the seniors selected by the college faculty to receive their top awards for their class. Students, as I said, please stand when I call your name. The Algernon Sidney Sullivan Foundation annually presents the Sullivan Awards to a young man and a young woman of the senior class who have manifested such qualities of heart, mind, and conduct that show a spirit of love and helpfulness for others. This year, the Algernon City Sydney Sullivan Award goes to Dante Alexander Jose Garrido. Please stand, Dante. And this year, the Mary Sullivan, Mary Mildred Sullivan Award goes to Sadie Elizabeth Ann Bradley. The H.M. Young Ring is the highest honor available to a member of the college senior class. It is awarded on the basis of scholarship, Christian character, and promise of future usefulness to society. The class of 2023 recipient of the Young Ring is Elena Rachel Gaston Laney. <laughs> it is now my privilege to recognize the seminary graduate selected by the seminary faculty to receive the top award for 2023. When your name is called, please stand to be recognized. The Bruce G. Pierce Award for Christian Leadership was established in the memory of the late Bruce Pierce who exemplified Christian humility, service, and leadership. This award is presented annually to the graduating master's student who most completely integrates a spirit of Christian servanthood with the principles of Christian leadership. This year, that student is Mr. Joshua Charles Starnes. Chairman Whitehurst, would you join me at the podium? And this time I would ask the candidates for a Bachelor of Arts degree and a Bachelor of Science degree to please rise. Mr. Whitehurst, faculty has examined these candidates and finds that they have met or by August 
should meet all the requirements for the Bachelor of Arts degree or the Bachelor of Science degree. On the recommendation of the faculty and with the authority invested in me by the Board of Trustees of Erskine College, I can confer upon you the Bachelor of Arts degree or the Bachelor of Science degree with all the rights, honors, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. You may be seated. Well, the candidates for the Master of Arts in Christian Counseling, Master of Arts in Practical Ministry, the Master of Arts in Theological Studies, the Master of Divinity degree, and the Master of Theology degree. Please rise. Mr. Whitehurst, the faculty has examined these candidates and finds that they have met or by September should meet all requirements for the Master of Arts in Christian Counseling degree, Master of Arts in Practical Ministry degree, Master of Arts in Theological Studies degree, Master of Divinity degree, or the Master of Theology degree. On the recommendation of the faculty, and with the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Erskine College and Theological Seminary, I confer upon you the Master of Arts in Christian Counseling degree, the Master of Arts in Practical Ministry degree, the Master of Arts in Theological Studies degree, the Master of Divinity degree, or the Master of Theology degree, with all the rights, honors, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. And will the candidates for the Doctor of Ministry degree please rise. Mr. Whiters, the faculty has examined these candidates and find that they have met or by September should meet all the requirements for the Doctor of Ministry degree. On the recommendation of the faculty, and with the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Erskine College and Theological Seminary, I confer upon you the Doctor of Ministry degree with all the rights, honors, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. Thank you. You may be seated.
Joel Aiden Cotton. Patrick Tucker Kerfman. Austin Halen Duckett in absentia. Riza Maria Real Pajeva. Brooklyn Najis. Belton Bowman. <laughs> Matthias Benoit. Yes. Calvin Victor Boykin the third. Kennedy Hayden Bradley. Sadie Elizabeth Ann Bradley, summa cum laude, with honors in English and history. She is also the Mary Milford Sullivan Award winner. Alexa Morgan Bruce, cum laude, with honors in psychology. <laughs> Rebecca Jane Claxton, summa cum laude, with honors in history. <laughs> Tomei Filkov, the second. Madison Connie Marie Fisher. <laughs> Dante Alexander Jose Garrido, magna cum laude with honors in political science, and he is also the winner of the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award. Grace Gibbons. <laughs> Ryan Lawrence Gladden. <laughs> Vanessa Charlene Harshaw, magna cum laude, with honors in social studies and history. Grace Hegler, magna cum laude. <laughs> Meredith Grace Hollinger, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jonathan Baylor Horn, summa cum laude, with departmental honors in English. Bryce Nathan Jeffcoat. Christian Parker Jefferson. Timothy Andrew Legrand. Marcellus Benjamin Livingston. <laughs> Elliot William Maddox. Joshua Mark Meadows.
Marissa Lucille Pawson Reed. Christopher Lee Reckner. Abigail Grace Rickman. Jason Frank Saul. Ashby Ryan Smith. Charles Joshua Starnes. Zion Dennis Walker. Colby Xavier Krim. <laughs> Vernon Andrew Gaines in absentia. Xavier J. Allen. <laughs> Sophia Grace Attaway in absentia. Dennis Ibu Cole in absentia. Santiago Garzon Sanchez. Gregory Thomas Hazelhurst, Jr. Dylan Hunter Humes. Blake Matthew Johnson. Camden Edward Lee. Salvatore Lo Piccolo IV, summa cum laude, in absentia. Christopher James Miller, in absentia. Lauren Mullen, magna cum laude. Tyler Russell Nichols, in absentia. Elijah Clemson Rowland, Peniel Usue Sabino Rodriguez in absentia. Azair Smith in absentia. Jamari John Michael Smith. Abraham Timoni III. Maylene Sabrina Ann Aguilar. Yeah. Emily Kate Alanise. Yeah. Chad Justin <laughs> Allen. Tillman Graham Allen. <laughs> Dalen Grace Ashley. <laughs> Taylor Shea Atkinson. Tariq Antoine Bacon. <laughs> Tori Elise Bagwell, summa cum laude. Alexis Marie Blackman, summa cum laude.
Andrew James Brisbane, magna cum laude. Dalton J. Boyd, in absentia. Jessica Dawn Brock. Olivia Eleanor Brown, summa cum laude, and she also holds the highest GPA in the graduating class. Jensen Thomas Button. Jalen Marquise Canada. Juan Jose Cardoza Paz. Allison Elizabeth Carter, summa cum laude. Parker Raines Cassell. Todson Kivon Cato. <laughs> Julia Lynn Sesta. <laughs> Victoria Lynn Cooley, cum laude. <laughs> Jonathan Alexander Cooper, magna cum laude. Mariah Brooke Quarry. Jaron Cordell Cortez. Jordan Christopher DeArno. Tor Forgard Davis. Roman Gabriel De Leon. Joseph Landon Dennis. Claudia Eve Donald, magna cum laude. Darius Jamal Dotson. Zachary Thomas Drake. Julian Natsumi Eaton. <laughs> Carly Ann Egan. Thomas John Farrell. Jonathan Xavier Fuller. Maisie Jo Garner. <laughs> Elena Rachel Gaston, magna cum laude. She is also the recipient of the H.M. Young Ring Award. <laughs> Tre William Trevor Gerard. Jeremy Kevin Geyer, Jr. <laughs> Emma
Emily Sarah Gilbert, magna cum laude. Riley John Gobin. Gabriel Allen Golden, magna cum laude. Amber Gray in absentia. Jason Chase Hadwin. Connor Dean Harrison, magna cum laude. Katara Arquette Henry. Haley Maylin Holcomb. Holly Blair Huffstetler. Jonathan James Hummel in absentia. Catherine Elizabeth Hunter. Quentin Commander Jabeth. Parker Reed Jackson. Shamel Devez Antoine Jacques. Olivia Denise Jans. Benjamin Reed Jansen. Kanan Seth Houston Kemfort. Calvin Reese uh, Krista. Luke Thomas Martin. Christopher Marshall McCune. Camilo Moreno Vasquez Cunlaude. Carson Stanley Morton. Michael Dominic Muscatelli. Sarah Elizabeth Naval Cum Laude. Caitlin Noel Neves. Tyler Marshall Owen. <laughs> Alyssa Annette Pagan. <laughs> Emma Marie Harris. Jonathan Niels Penter. Karina Brooks Petrovich. Jason Jacob Randolph II. Christian Samuel Resalam. Amaya Danae Richardson.
Carolyn Ritchie. Christian Jesus Rivera. James Davis Robertson in absentia. Andres Esteban Rojas Garbanzo. William Lorenz Ross Cum Laude. Tara Gail Simones, magna cum laude. <laughs> Mia Nicole Settle, magna cum laude. <laughs> Gordon Joseph Sofell. Catherine Carrington Spires, summa cum laude. Ryan Christopher Sutton. Cheyenne Danielle Zabo. Anna Faye Taylor, magna cum laude. Tyson Isaiah Thomas. Dylan Lee Truslow. Kelsey Anna Tyson, summa cum laude. Caroline Margaret Van Dusen. Jenna Reed Varner. Carter Crenshaw Vest, cum laude. Daniel Benjamin Voss. Michael Allen Whitesides. Sierra Marie Walter with Departmental Honors in Psychology. Spencer Thomas Adley. Jared Nathan Aguirre. Russell Archibald. Shane Antonio Keyshawn Bell. Morgan Holly Brown. Joshua Devin Collette in absentia. Brandon Scott Deans. Come on, Come on, Jacob Cade Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. Julio Antonio Illich.
Corbin Eugene Strother in absentia. Kasia Demaya Tisdale. now please escort the seminary candidates for degrees to receive their diplomas. in Christian counseling. Kayla Collins Overholt in absentia. Rebecca Delaney Atkinson. <laughs> Master of Arts in Practical Ministry. Cynthia Louise James Walters in absentia. Samuel Aaron Leonard in absentia. Anna Holden Price. <laughs> Dolores Ballinger Scott in absentia. Joe Allen Suddeth. studies. Jackson Bryant Gravit in absentia. Kimberly Ann Gilliams. Jordan Mallory Kirby in absentia. William Gregory Shepard. Shaw in absentia. Gregory A. Tourneau in absentia. Master of Divinity, Lois Edward Dorsey.
Ryan Lawrence Gladden. Michael Ethan McConnell, in absentia. Shane Miller, in absentia. Teresa Reed. Charles Joshua Starnes. Christopher Jerome Nance. Master of Theology, Justin David Bricky in absentia, Lance Foster Collins, <laughs> Timothy Adrian Rice in absentia. To honor our doctoral candidates, after each name is announced, the title of his or her dissertation will be read. Each candidate will then receive the doctoral hood from a member of the seminary faculty. If the members of the seminary faculty are hooding doctoral candidates, could please come forward at this time. Doctor of Ministry. Keith Christopher Brady in absentia. Honore Neal, how to teach the doctrine of the Trinity to a 21st century people. Jonathan Speed, Sacrificial Gifts, Saving Lives, Elevating Hope, and Liberating Souls Through Organ Donation. <laughs> William Spencer Kane, Building a Foundation for Suffering in a pandemic world. <laughs> Benjamin Paul Glasser, seeking the lost among the forgotten. Where are the men and how to bring them into the kingdom? John A. Levine, Pastoral Guidance, Theological Anthropology and the Art of Pastoral Care. <laughs> Cynthia Wolf Munsey, A Listening People, Our Timeless Response to God in a Distracted Age. Linda Cheesy Murtala, the role of chaplains in Army basic combat training. <laughs> Philip David Rogers, gifted for service, helping the members of Cherry Point Baptist Church discover and use their spiritual gifts. Jacob Alvin Clement, the Christ-centered church, the role of preaching in church revitalization. <laughs> Jeremy James Canaan, 
a strategy for ministry to the remotely piloted aircraft community. Jerry David Hall Jr. in absentia. Donald Ray Hayes, the battlefield of faith. Angela Michelle Timpson, de developing a biblical theological model of equine assisted therapy for the bereaved. And now the moment you have been waiting for. College graduates, you may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Association, I'm sincerely humbled to address the Erskine College and Erskine Theological Seminary classes of 2023 on your graduation. First, I would like to take a moment of personal privilege to recognize the Erskine College senior class for their gift to our beloved alma mater, a white oak planted in front of Reed Hall, which will help perpetuate this beautiful canopy for generations to come. What a great contribution for future generations of students to enjoy. By virtue of the fact that you, the classes of 2023 on this day, have earned the right to call the first in your alma mater, and by authority and instruction from the Alumni Association Board of Directors, I welcome you and induct you into membership of the first in Alumni Association. As students, you are beneficiaries of exceptional support from the Alumni Association <laughs> in the direct form of financial scholarships. In turn, we urge you to become benefactors of those who will follow you at Erskine College and Erskine Theological Seminary. The avenues available to you are numerous and you will gain much from your generous participation. While each of us has a different experience from our respective generation at Erskine, we all call Erskine home. I personally encourage you to remain close to those with whom you have formed friendships during this very special time in your lives. Keep the fond memories of Erskine alive as you embark on a journey that will include returning to God and this community a portion of what has been, been bestowed to you and return to, camp and return to campus often. The 121st Psalm is often referred to as the Traveler's Psalm. In the Scots Presbyterian heritage of our, of our alma mater, the 121st Psalm is traditionally read or sung when someone is about to embark on a journey. I will not subject you to my singing, so instead I will read Psalm 121 as a prayer that your journey from Erskine will be a blessed one. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God bless you, congratulations, and welcome to the Erskine Alumni Association.
Mr. Cook, um, on behalf of my fellow graduates, I want to thank you for our induction into the Erskine Alumni Association. I also want to thank all of Erskine's professors, coaches, and staff that supported us along the way. But most importantly, I want to thank my fellow peers. Thank you for all the amazing conversations, the stories, and the lessons that you all shared with me. I will truly cherish them forever. We are very proud to be alumni of Erskine College. God bless you all. This year begins a new tradition at Erskine College. The stole that you will notice that each of our graduates is wearing is called the stole of gratitude. The stole of gratitude. And it is worn as a visible representation that numerous people have influenced the graduates' academic achievement. At times, it may be a single person who has played a significant part in the graduate's role, graduate's life. Other times, it may be friends, classmates, professors, or an entire family. As a symbol of gratitude, it will become the tradition for the graduate to present the stole to their honoree after the ceremony. The stole is a beautiful way to thank someone and provide an item of remembrance from the seminary or from the ceremony for all of their help. And now to the graduates, we at Erskine charge you with these words taken from the college's vision statement. Go forth for lives of service and leadership, building Christ's church and influencing society for God's glory. And I want to thank everyone who has been involved today in the commencement exercises and all the families and the relatives who have attended. And now would the assembly please rise and join our newest alumni in the singing of the Erskine College alma mater, which you will find in the program, led by Ms. Sadie Bradley, <laughs> class of 2023, president of the Corlears. And please remain standing for the benediction after the alma mater. that is God's good word of grace spoken over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now go in the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Go in peace. Please remain standing at your seats until the platform party has completed the reception, after which you are all dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.